Can you believe we're making these projects from gift bags and gift boxes from Dollar Tree? Keep watching. Okay, DIY number one is going to be made with a Dollar Tree gift bag. They have a gorgeous variety of red truck and rustic looking bags for you to choose from. So you're going to pick some ribbons, you're going to choose your bag. And then my sign here is something that I got from Dirt Cheap. I paid a dollar for it. Can you believe it? A dollar. I'm going to use my yardstick and show you that this is a 16 inch square so you're going to need something about that size to put your bag on all right these handles will just feed back through they have a little plasticky thing on them we're going to repurpose one of those handles so you're going to keep that for later and also use that little tag for something else i'm cutting off a plastic hanger and then i'm going to begin cutting out my picture it's the little red truck uh-huh look at that the color is gorgeous there's no glitter on this bag gonna take the little extra piece off up there we're not gonna need that and then I'm going to measure and trim out where I need to cut it using a pencil take off the edges we want this to fit from side to side there is going to be room on the top and the bottom and that is all right with me because I have a solution for that I got a pile of these beautiful bags. They're different. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm gonna be doing more projects with these. So thumbs up and comment below if you would like to see more projects done with these bags. You're not gonna believe how this, this turns out. I'm going to take a ribbon that has no wire, put it across the top edge and the bottom edge. Instead of having a frayed edge poking out there, I've made it long enough so that it will overlap and we can put it on the back side. By the way, this picture, I have one with the tree side, just like this, hanging in my bedroom. I think I got four of these. So lots of options, especially for the price. You cannot be price, I mean a dollar, yeah. I think the board originally came from Target. It did. But I got it at dirt cheap. Now using the glue stick, which is a clean option, which was getting a little chunky on me there, wanted to show you. Not a problem. We're just going to press it down and keep moving. Be sure that you get all the way out to the edges so that you don't have any peeling once you get your project down on your press it down you don't want any air under there and I'm using my wooden ruler to make sure that it is pressed all the way down now the holes at the top where the handles were we're just going to take a white metallic marker or a blue or a, a chalk marker, there we go, and you're just going to fill in those little holes. So I'm using my sanding block from Dollar Tree and taking the edges off. This gives it a nice smooth edge and finish. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I didn't wait until the glue was dry. I went right ahead and did this. Excuse my Halloween shirt. I'm doing these videos a little early for you guys so you can get everything you need to make these before 
the items disappear from the store. Because if you shop Dollar Tree, you know how it goes. Better get it while it's there. Okay. So just in case I've not knocked anything loose with all that, I went ahead and pressed it back down. I'm going to take another piece of ribbon to put over the edge. And this is one of those lace ribbons. This is not in the holiday sections. It's in the regular crafting section. And the green and white polka dot ribbon was actually thrifted. But you use anything you like. I think Dollar Tree has a red plaid ribbon that might be pretty for this as well. And you don't have to have a wired ribbon, but you certainly can use one. I'm going to center this between the ribbon and the border of the picture and just use a couple of little dots of hot glue to put it down, leaving those ends a little bit long so that I can wrap them around the back for a nice clean finish. Same thing on the bottom. This ribbon has a slight curve. Um, I don't know if all of them do or if it was just the, the spool that I picked, but it does have a slight curve, but that's not a problem. It's cotton and you can just manipulate it down into the position that you need it to be in. trim off any extra that you have. Now it's time for my wooden stickers. And they do have a little plastic on the back that you peel off before you put them down. When I bought these, I saw that there was a chip piece here. It was still hanging on by the fibers of the wood. I went ahead and tried to patch that with a chalk marker. And it did help with the little disruption in the color there but I do go black, back and hot glue it. Now you gotta find the positioning here where you want your letters to be. This pack came from Target last year and I got it from Dirt Cheap. You can use any type of sticker that you want to use. Since this is kind of a large sign though, you are going to need um, larger letters just to balance it. If you're good with hand lettering or painting, you can certainly do that here. So I didn't measure out to get the exact center of this because that's really not something that I wanted to do this time. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and putting it down. And the ribbon there on the bottom does give me a little wiggle room. I can. I can see my line there, so it's fairly straight. It's just probably not centered in the board, but that's okay. I like it anyway. All right. And you got more of the same here. Those were the easy pieces. Now time for the little, a bit more complicated to get these pieces down, but that is not a problem. I would never ever be um, comfortable enough to just peel those off and stick them down randomly. I just, there's no way. But if you put them down on there first, you can get an idea of where you want them to be. So I call this a dry run. Kind of see how I want them spaced and then get them where I want them to be. So that's what you see here. So these little wood stickers also have the same adhesive on the back, little sticker backing. I'm just going to peel them off and try to put them back in the same spot that I found them. Luckily, one of those bag handle holes was covered by the welcome sign. But I couldn't quite get it spaced where it would cover up the second one. 
but it's no big deal. We don't sweat the small stuff here, do we? And again, don't worry if you don't have the stickers. Use whatever stickers you have. I think it's pretty with the different fonts, though. I really like that, how that turned out. Okay, so you see where it's broken on the bottom? I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and just patch it. Not a problem. I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to throw it away and start over. Nope. I'm going to use a little stick, put a dot of glue on it, and I'm going to patch it up. And hold it in place for a moment until it is set up like it should be. There you have it. Guys, this was made from a bag. A bag. A Dollar Tree bag. Is this not the most super high-end looking sign of a red truck that you have ever seen? I'm telling you, you could definitely go to Hobby Lobby and spend possibly $39, $40 on a sign this size with this much detail going on in it. We did it for just a few dollars. Yep, we sure did. We sure did. So we need to hang this thing. I'm going to use the handle that was already on the bag. And I am going to use this tag. Cut this down. This is going to be the paper that I use to patch over where I put my glue. Gluing it down. And the paper on top of the glue just secures it down so that it, nothing, nothing moves. Everything stays right where it needs to be. We're going to do the same thing on the side. I know that it's not level on the back, but it will hang fine. There you go. Just cleaning up my little glue that squished out. Now on to DIY number two, which is the Dollar Tree gift box. They have lots of these too. This was in a three pack. This is probably medium size. So we're going to deck the halls with this and this thrifted frame. We're going to take it apart, give that glass a good cleaning with some alcohol, let it dry, take the paper back off of the frame and set it aside. We're going to take this Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Apple Red Paint. Take this frame outside, spray it with two coats and let it dry. All right, my glass is clean. I'm going to lay it on top of the box and get the sizing right for my framed artwork. So there we, we got the edges there. Carefully cut this out so that you can save the edging for a different project. We're crafters, we just don't throw stuff away. Not like normal people do, right? We're gonna save it. The edging doesn't have to be exactly perfect on this. It's gonna be in a frame, so you won't see if you have the little jags here and there. All right, so this is what I mean. This is the trim that I had off of the boxes. Look at all that extra stuff you could use on other projects. Set that aside, we might need it for another project at another point. So our frame is dry and we've brought it back in. I'm gonna put some glue on the paper backing of the frame and we're gonna just reassemble it. I'm going to put the glass back in and then we're going to lay the picture that we cut from the box right down in there and secure it with those tabs. And we have a standing piece of art that is framed. Isn't that nice? I love the way the red frame looks with the red poinsettias. 
Thanks so much for stopping by and watching my video and crafting with me. I hope you come back and I'll see you again soon. Bye.